this is the bit.ly link that I sent out or gave you all last week, if you were here last week. If you weren't here last week, this is new to you. So there are two capital letters and there's one number. You'll see those in different colors. bit.ly slash docs2c. What it is is an ebook. And we're gonna be going over the steps that are in this ebook. So we're, you're actually gonna get some hands-on while we're doing it. That makes sense. Now, this is um, under Creative Commons. So when you do open it up, um, you're gonna see this. You're not gonna see any file, edit view. I'm using my uh, space bar to go to the next slides. Uh, you can also use your arrow keys to go back if you wish. This is an ebook. This is stuck in time, or no, this is dynamic. This is dynamic, okay? So that means, and it just happened last night, that means when I update it, you get the updated version. So if you have the, if you're using the same link that you used last week and you're like, well, it doesn't look different to me. Yes, it does. This was added just last night, okay, convert, all right? And that meant that the, uh, the table of contents changed a little bit. This was added last week. So those of you that are asking for a version that you can share with people, this is actually stuck in time. This PDF version was from last week. So it doesn't have this conversion area in it yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create another PDF, um, probably keep the old one, and I'll date it with June 8th, okay? Then there will be another PDF link here, dated June, what is today? The 16th, okay? So you'll be able to download whichever PDF version you want. Now, most people want the most recent, but some people want to go back in time, so I'm allowing for both of that. So this ebook that you're looking at is dynamic. I'm always adding to it, I'm always updating, I'm gonna be adding some more menu items and stuff to it, so you'll always be up to date if you use that bit.ly link, okay? If you use the PDF version, that's fine, but those are stuck in time. And I will timestamp them so you know what time they're stuck with. This is me, my name is Melinda Holt, I'm a PS2 technology integration. Uh, we are housed, OTAN is housed at the Sacramento County Office of Education. OTAN is a leadership project for California, and we get to do all kinds of cool stuff with adult education, uh, mainly teaching teachers how to use technology in their classroom or for their programs. I am a Google Certified Educator Level 2. I've been a certified trainer for five, four years, five years, something like that. Um, I'm also a certified admin for Google, so I know Google backwards and forwards. So if you have any questions about Google or maybe even the back end, um, maybe you have your administrator giving you uh, one story and you want to check to make sure it's true. And if there's any administrators in the house, I say this with love. Uh, <laughs> sometimes people just don't know that there's a special little checkbox on the back end that they, they could click and allow other people to do things. So check with me if you think, oh man, that doesn't really sound right. Ask Melinda. Hey, I might know. Um, and if I don't, I might be able to find the answer for you. This is how to use the deck. I've already gone over that a little bit. Um, there's a table of contents, which I'll be showing you in a sec. And again, this deck is being updated. There's gonna be a PDF version that's stuck in time. Here's the agenda. We're gonna do, we just did a brief overview on how to use the handout. Um, discussion of docs and uses. Let's go back in time to yesterday or last week. So those of you that were there, you know that it was fast. I tried to get through all of this instead of just taking one little chunk at a time, which is what I originally planned, right? I originally planned to just do maybe two or three sections and then we'd go over the next part the next time. So this is part of the Google Docs series. We're just doing Google Docs here, okay? So last week was a quick overview. Let's just rename it. It was a quick overview of Docs. This week, we're actually gonna be diving in and doing more with less, okay? So you're actually gonna get more hands-on. It's not gonna be so fast. We're not gonna be um, running out of time, <laughs> all right? And wherever we stop this week, that's where we're gonna pick up next week. So as you go through, you're gonna be learning about docs. The great thing about learning about docs is that most of the stuff that you learn here, 
you can carry into slides and sheets. So when we get to a slide that says app site docs, let's go here. I'm going to go to app site docs. So it says create new from app site, right? And it's telling you how to get to the docs.google.com site. All you have to do is substitute the word sheets or the, sh the word slides where you see docs and it's the same thing. That's not to say that the slide stack that I've created on slides is exactly the same. It's not. There are things that are different between slides and docs. All right. But a lot of it is the same. So if you learn this, this, uh, this base, this baseline on docs, you're going to be able to carry that information into slides and sheets and probably forms and a little bit into drawings too. Okay. On this handout, you're going to see a TOC in the upper right hand corner of all of the uh, pages. When you click on it, it will take you back to the table of contents. All righty. So we covered last week, we had some terms, right? Went over some terms. Um, all of these have to do with docs. We went over G Suites, the club versus the pub. We went through the icons. Uh, this is really good, especially on the PDF. You can print that out and give it to your students so they know what these arrows mean, the undo and the redo. There's the print, right? The painter or the format painter right there. Um, and then we went into how to create new docs. So this is going to be a quick overview right here. You can create a new doc many different ways. So if you're already signed into your account, you can create a new doc by going to uh, drive.google.com. All right. I'm going to, as soon as a new document shows up, you should title it. And I always title mine Deletito. So I know to, um, to go back and delete it. As soon as you type something, it is saving. Do you see that? I'm going to just right here. It's really, really small up at the top of my screen. And I can't make it bigger for you, otherwise I would. But it's saving, and it's telling me it's saving it to the cloud. Okay, so here's the document status right here. They just added this a few weeks ago. Um, so you can hit Control S. It does absolutely nothing but make you feel better. But hey, it saves by itself. Okay, you don't have to turn it on or turn it off. It's always on. Um, after you create a new document, right? Lots of different ways. The app site, docs.google.com, you could go there and they have templates there ready for you. Again, this, we covered this last week. So when the video gets up, you guys can watch it or you can just uh, read this. Okay. Read the ebook. Um, here's dot new. We already went over that. Creating new from template. When you, um, there is an option when you go to drive and most people don't know this. I'm going to go to drive. And when you hit the new button, you have Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. Now, most people just click these and they move on. They don't see these arrows off to the side. When you select those arrows or when you hover over the arrow, you'll see blank document, which is the same as clicking on Google Docs, but you also see from a template. So if you wanted to, if you were on the drive and you didn't want to go to docs.google.com, I don't know what the reasoning would be, but you can hit from a template and then the templates gallery will come up, okay? These are the same templates that you would get when you go to docs.google.com. Upload, this is where we're gonna start having some fun right now. Um, you can upload using the new button in Drive, okay? So you upload a file using new, you click on the new button, okay? You're gonna have a little icon. It looks like a little file with an arrow going up. That's called up load yeah and then you would upload any document that you want into drive so when you upload a word file because that's equivalent to docs when you upload a word file you'll see a little w off to the side okay that means it's a word file <laughs> okay so i'm going to open up my drive now you might have to look here unless you have some uh, word docs oops in your um, in your drive that you could look at. I'm actually going to go look at some Word documents. You know what? I'm going to do better than that. Let's go ahead and upload 
a Word document. If you have one on your desktop or if you have one on your laptop, um, if you have a tablet, uh, you might have one, a Word document. I don't know. Uh, if you're following along on a phone, forget about it. Just watch. So I'm going to go to New. I'm hitting on the New button. And then I'm going to go to File Upload. Okay. And then I am going to go to somewhere in here. I had an Office. Here we go, Office Files. Okay. So I have Office Files. So I'm going to open that. And I got all kinds of Office files here. They're all in Microsoft format because they were created with Microsoft. So here's one called Resume. So I want to upload that. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to open. Now, because I was on my drive at the top level, it's going to go at my drive level. When you do that, you're going to get this little, uh, I call it an upload box in the bottom, the bottom right hand corner. Okay, now some files take longer to upload because they're bigger. This one is really small. Don't do anything until you see this little green check mark. If you don't see a green check mark after you've uploaded, it means it's still trying to do it. So give it time. Relax. <sighs> Breathe. Yeah? Okay. Now, something else that you may not know is after, you, after that little green check mark is there, it toggles back and forth from a green check to a folder. So if you've done this and you've got the green check right now, just kind of hover over the green check and it should turn into a folder. Or maybe if you go away and come back, there we go. It's going back and forth. So this is going to show me exactly where that file is. Why do I need to know that? I already know it when my drive. Yeah, but maybe you were three folders down when you decided you wanted that new document, right? And you uploaded it and then you went back to my drive and to find it and you couldn't because you can't remember where you put it, <laughs> right? So this is a quick and easy way to find it. Um, you just hit that folder, right? And because I had it on my drive, <laughs> it, it went there. So, but right here, it's telling me exactly where it is. Okay, now this little box, you can actually close it. There's a little X right above the green check. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that now. Here is my new document. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you can see the difference between a Google Doc. It, it's a blue icon with three little uh, white lines on it. And then the Microsoft Word is a blue box with the W. Well, okay, so I've uploaded a Microsoft Word document. Can I edit it? Yes, you can. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called open with. Open with. There's two ways to do open with. Uh, first way is to right click on the document itself. So I've, the document is highlighted, right? I click once on it, not twice, click once on it. And then I right click and I will see open with up at the top. Now I have a few other little um, gadgets and gadgets on my Google Drive. So that's why I have different things here, but I do see Google Docs, right? So I can click on Google Docs, and that's one way, and it will open. All right, I'm going to show you the other way to open it. You're actually going to double click on it, just like you would if you were opening it, right? And then you're looking at this with the black lines all the way around it in the black frame. You're going, uh, you told me I could edit. Well, we still need to open with. So when you open something up that's of Microsoft format, you should see the open with option up at the top of the screen in the black frame. Okay, I'm gonna hit the arrow next to it and there are my options. So I'm gonna select Google Docs. Remember, I could have right clicked, but here's the important part. You have to wait for the magic because what Google's doing is going, okay, you want this to be in Microsoft. Okay, we gotta put on all the coding and everything. All right, here we go, here we go. Okay, boom, here you go. So here's that document and now I can edit it skills for me. Oh, it helps if you type it right for me. Okay. All right. So there we go. So the formatting took place. Everything should transfer over exactly the way it did or the, exactly the way it looked in Microsoft. It should look in Google. 
are some things going to be different? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because there are some fonts that, that Microsoft uses that Google has no clue what they are. So it matches as close as it can. Um, it might be that your pictures might be a little out of whack, but to date, I, every Microsoft document that I've opened has had very little um, uh, problems uh, in keeping its format, okay? When you're looking, if you followed along, when you're looking at the top of your screen, the title, you should see something that says .docx. And when I hover over it, you can see that it says Microsoft Word Format. This is not a Google Doc. This is not a Google Doc. This is still a Microsoft document. What Google is allowing me to do is to edit this document. Now, do I have to save a Microsoft document when it's in my Google Drive? No, it's already saved. Okay, it's already saved. So I can see the changes. If I click on that little cloud and it says all changes are saved, everything's done, I'm good to go. So now I can actually just close this and go back to my drive or go back to whatever. Okay, and we're gonna go back. That was opened up in a new window. So here are my, here's my document. It's still Microsoft Word, and look at the date timestamp nine thirty five. Right, that's that's about when I opened it. Okay, and all of the changes are there. Why would you want to convert this to Google if you can edit edit in Microsoft? This is why right here. So right here, 328 kilobytes. So Microsoft, and that is actually, I have done nothing to this document. All I did was go in and get a uh, template from Microsoft, okay? 328K sounds small, but um, it's actually pretty big. And all of this adds up. All of this adds up. So why do you want um, to do a Google format? Well, let's look at this document on my drive right here. It's a Google Doc. How much file? space is it taking? How much storage is it taking? Zero. Would you be able to keep two versions of the document, Word and Docs? Absolutely. But why would you want to do that? Um, <laughs> uh, Gloria, you can, yes, you can absolutely t keep your Microsoft and you could also convert one of them to a Google Doc, which is what is in the handout and what I'm going to show you coming up. Um, so that is how you can upload a Microsoft file and that is how you can edit a Microsoft file. So upload is really, really cool. There's another way to do an upload. I'm going to make my screen just a little bit smaller. Um, and actually what I'm going to show you next, it fits what a file, how a file can be uploaded beyond the new button. Okay. So I'm not going to use the new button to do it this time. I'm going to use a drag method. So here's a, on my desktop, here's a folder full of files, right? And they're all Microsoft files. There's a CSV, there's docs, and there's a PowerPoint, right? So what if I want all of these files in my drive? Do I have to do the new button and upload each one of them separately or uh, do I have to go to new folder upload and then get, get it in that way? No. What you can do, again, I can do it just by the file or use the same method with the folder. I'm going to click. I'm holding that file. I'm holding down my, my left button and I'm dragging it into my drive. And when my drive detects it, oh, you see I got the green plus? And my drive kind of highlights. The whole drive is highlighting now. Now I'm getting the upload box. And it's telling me Office files, six of six. When it first started, it was zero of six and one of six and two, three, four, five, six, right? So bada bing, bada boom. Now I've got all six files. I'm gonna hit that folder button just to figure out where the heck I put it. And here it is. When I open it, they are all Microsoft Word files. Now, if you were paying close attention, over here on my desktop, there are five files. I have an extra one. What? Yes, you have an extra one. It's called .ds underscore store. 
This is uh, Google's way of noting, well, actually this is the folder. <laughs> this is the folder code on Microsoft. All right, so, and look, it's 6K right here. So what I do after I upload a folder is I will select the dot, it's always dot DS underscore store. I select it and then I trash it. You don't need it. So how do you move docs between Google accounts? Aha. So if I have a Google doc on my drive and I want to move it between accounts, what I will do is share it with myself. So let's say this presentation, um, I want to share it with, with my other, with my work self, okay? This is my, my personal self and I wanna work with my, <laughs> I wanna share it with my work self, okay? So self one and self two. So a couple ways to do it. Um, I usually do the right click. If I, if I just wanna share it, I don't wanna edit it or anything, I'll just do the, uh, the right click. Um, and I will go to share, okay? Or I will select the file in my drive. It's kind of highlighted. And then the share button also appears at the top of the screen. So I'm gonna click that share button. Either way, right click. You could also open it and go to the share button. Some of you might be seeing a different share window than I do right now. Google's in the process of um, uh, releasing this new share to the world. Um, and it hasn't gotten to all the club accounts yet. So if you're on a school Google, a school Google, um, then you might not see this. You might see the old share. It works the same. What you need to do is add the person that you want to share this with. And here I am. This is my work self. Okay. You need to give that person editor rights because you're probably going to want yourself to be able to edit unless you don't like yourself, and then that's kind of not a good thing, isn't it? Um, so give yourself edit rights, okay? You can also notify the people. So you'll get an email to your other email. This is getting a little confusing. So self two is gonna get an email from self one that here's the doc, okay? Or here's the PowerPoint. Um, I usually also check the settings gear while I'm here, um, just to make sure that, yes, editors can change permissions. Because with, with self two, right, this is self one sharing it, but self two is gonna need to be able to change permissions. Uh, so I, ch I just meh, back check, make sure it's there. And then I'll hit send, okay? Now my SCOE work self, my self two, will have gotten a message that I have this PowerPoint in my shared with me area. Now here's where it's gonna get a little sticky because now you're gonna to wanna to know, well, who owns the document? In this instance, I am on the pub. I'm on the pub and I just shared a document with the club, with the G Suites. So self one is pub, self two is club. I cannot switch ownership between the two. If it was pub to pub, you can, you can share ownership. You can actually transfer ownership is what it's called, okay? So if I had a club account, or I'm sorry, if I had a pub account and I shared with another pub account, I could transfer the ownership to that person. So sharing between accounts is doable, pub to pub, club to club, and the club has to be on the same domain. And then you can transfer ownership, okay? You cannot transfer ownership between pub and club. However, because I went to the share on this document and I went to the gear and I checked to make sure that viewers and commenters can see the options to download, print, and copy on this PowerPoint, that means that this self two person can make a copy. I cannot give this person ownership rights. So right here, it has the option to make an owner, but it won't let me do it because this club won't allow files from the pub to be owned by someone in the club. That's kind of hard to wrap your brain around. 
just imagine pub to pub, club to club. So this is pub to club, ownership transfer won't work. Club to pub won't work. Pub to club won't work. <laughs> but pub to pub does work. So if, if this was a pub account, um, then I could go to make an owner and then that file would be transferred to that person. I would still be an editor. Self one would still be an editor, but then the owner would be the other pub person. With the editor level, can others delete docs? Absolutely. So, but here's the, the beauty of it. I own this document. It is mine. No one can delete it from the face of the universe except me because I am the important one. I am the universe a goddess of this document, right? So um, yeah, they can delete it from their drive and which is not, you know, that that's fine. They don't have to have it in their drive. They don't have to have it and share it with me, but then they can't edit it. So then they have to come to you and say, oh, you know, I forgot and I still needed to add something. Could you add me back to the share? And yes, you can do that. So if the person decides or they get a message from you or they see a document in shared with me that they, what the heck is this for? Click and then they delete it, <laughs> right? And then you come back to them and say, hey, did you get that document though? <gasps> uh oh, could you share it with me again? Yes, you can, okay? So can they delete it from the universe? Yes, they can. Um, if you have a shared folder and they delete it from the folder, yeah, that sucks because it, um, everybody else is gonna um, lose it as well. So if you have multiple editors on a folder and somebody deletes file number one, it's deleted for everybody except you. So all you have to do is add it back. That's usually the way it works. There are, you know, for every rule, there's something that's gonna break it. So um, it, it, nine times out of 10, you're, you're still gonna have the document not to worry about it, okay? Alrighty. Um, so that is, what's the difference between share and the link to the doc? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. The share link is just a, it's just a different way to, to get the document to somebody. Um, so when I click on this document and I go to the share right here, I can get the link. So I can copy that link and send it to the person. Um, some people, they don't have a, uh, a lot of tech skills. So giving them a link is a lot better than telling them, okay, uh, go open your drive and go to uh, shared with me and look for the document named. And if you can't find it, then do a search and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Just send them a link. Okay. So if someone who has a little bit, it, maybe they don't know drive that well, or they've never shared a document with anybody before, you might want to start them out with the, the get share link. It's, it's almost exactly the same. Okay. Alrighty, so we've done that, we've done that, and we've actually taken a short break. <laughs> Can they open a link without a Google account? That is such a good question. In the old days, the answer was absolutely not. Uh, in the new days, what I think is happening now, because I've heard about it, I haven't actually experienced it, is that they will open up the document and they're asked to put in a password so that they can open the document. So they put in a password, no big deal. And then when they do that, what they've actually done is created a Google account without them even knowing about it. So I, yes, I'm gonna, Gloria, I'm gonna say yes, but I'm not 100% sure. Can others download and print with the viewer only access level to prevent deleting with the editor level? Can they download and print? Absolutely, Rena. So let's go back to this document that I've shared with myself. And I'm, I'm even gonna add somebody else to it just so you, so we're gonna add Marjorie. Marjorie. Oh, wow, I've never, really? There we go. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna give this person viewer rights. Okay, I'm not gonna notify that person because she's sitting right here going, what the heck is she doing? So right here, it's telling me viewers of this file can see comments and suggestions. That's okay. And then I'm gonna hit share. All right, so now what I've just done is I've shared the document with uh, two people. 
On the share on this document, now you can see I have, I'm the owner, SCOE Tech is the owner, okay? Marjorie's been added as a viewer. So there's the important part on sharing Google Docs. Right here, the gear, click on it. Because you might want people to view the document, but not be able to download, print, or copy. But if you don't mind, then, then keep that checkbox selected. If you want to add editors, if you want them to type on the document, if you want them to touch the document, but you don't want them to add anybody else, you know, um, let's say I add Marjorie as a viewer because she's, oh, she, she, she types too much. I don't want her to type anything. So I just add her as a viewer. Okay. Uh, maybe I add, um, I'm just going to look at the, the Q&A here. I add Sandra as an editor. But Sandra is always inviting people into my documents, and I really don't like that. So what I would do is deselect editors can change permissions and share. That means they can't share with anybody else. Only I can share with other people. Only I as the owner can share with people. Okay? So different settings can be put into a Google Doc. Can they open the doc without a Google account if you share it? Can they open it? doc without a Google if you share it. No, they cannot. Um, if you add it and add them as a viewer and they don't have a Google account, they will not be able to share it. Karen, I see your, your what password? Where do they get it? This happens to me a lot. So Catherine, when somebody shares a document with you and if you have a Google account, tell them to share it with your Google account because every time someone shares with you and you're asked for the password, you put in a password. You put in a password and then you're able to open up the document. And then the next time somebody else shares with you, they're going to, Google's going to remember what that password was that you put in. You're actually creating a Google account when you do that. When you put in a password, you're actually creating a Google account. Now, if Google detects that you have a Google account, let's say I share something with you, Catherine, and your email address is kbarg at gmail.com, okay? And I share something with you. You can open it up, no problem, okay? Let's say you don't have a Google account. You have kbarg at hotmail.com, okay? I send you or I share a document with you. You click on the link. Google asks you, okay, uh, you have to enter a password to see this, this uh, document. So you enter a password, kbarg123. Okay, you go in and you look at the document. The next time I share a document with you, Google is going to expect kbarg at hotmail.com to put in as a password kbarg123 because that was the password you created on that first document. Complicated, isn't it? So my advice to everybody is to have your students use a Google account. There are ways to use a Google account without actually having at gmail.com. You can actually use an at hotmail.com for a Google account. That is not part of this workshop, but I will, um, I'll put that in next week's so that we can uh, go over that a little bit. Uh, Dominica, if owner later deletes a doc after sharing it with me, will I still be able to see the doc? Absolutely not. Once I delete this document, it is deleted from everybody, unless they've made a copy. If they've made a copy, I have no, I have no authority over it. I'm going to go to my drive. Okay, I've got a lot of folders here. And I'm going to open up my uh, OTAN folder. And I'm going to click on it. Yeah, come on. My Wi-Fi is slowing down a little bit. You guys don't experience slow Wi-Fi at all, do you? Oh, come on. There we go. OTAN training. All right. So here, let's say here's my form, my attendance survey. Here's my form. Okay. Now, if I know, if I've already created my folder in my Google Drive, it's going to show up on the far left-hand side if I have the arrow next to my drive pointing down. When it's pointing down, I see all of my folders. Okay. Um, so right here is my form, okay, attendance survey. And let's say I want to take this and I want to put it into my classroom folder. 
All right, so I can see all my folders. So all I have to do is click, hold, and drag it into where I see classroom is being highlighted. And then I let it go. Okay. Attendance form has disappeared from this level, from this folder, but it is going to be right here in the classroom folder where I put it. So that's one way to move folders around. That's one way to move uh, not only folder files, but folders. So I can take this entire folder and I could drag it anywhere I want into another folder if I wanted to do that. Um, on our OTAN or on my OTAN training, here we go. Any minute now, where's my upload? Here we go. Here are, here's a folder here called office files. Here's another way. If I want an entire folder to go into another folder, I can drag the folder into any of these folders on the far left hand side. Or let's say I want MSO files not converted to be in office files. All I have to do is click, hold and drag it down. Oops. Click, hold and drag it. Won't. That can let me. Here we go. Click, hold and drag it down into the, um, the, the file that I want. So click, hold and drag is a really good and fast way to get your files or your folders into another folder. How do you take a screenshot in Google? Uh, you don't. <laughs> Sandra, you have to have an extension or you have to use your laptop um, or your desktop uh, software um, on a Mac, which is what I'm using right now. We have something called Screenshot. If you're using Chrome, um, I would suggest getting the awesome Screenshot uh, app or extension rather, and you can take all kinds of different screenshots. All right, so here are the documents. Oh, look at these, these are already converted. They're already converted. I uploaded the office files, this same folder that's on my desktop, that's all Microsoft. I uploaded that entire folder for you earlier and they all stayed Microsoft, right? I also uploaded it last night. And when I did, they all converted to Google and there's no storage here, no storage. How come? because I had the magic button selected. So on your drive up at the top of your screen, those of you that were here last week, you saw this, it might've gone by really fast. So you might wanna look again. On the top of your drive, you have to do this in drive. You can't do it in docs.google.com. You can't do it by going to docs.new. You have to be in drive. So select the gear up at the top of your screen on the right hand side, and then select settings, okay? Um, on the general tab, we're going to have a convert uploaded files to Google Docs. Right now it's not selected. That's why when I drag the folder into my drive just an hour ago or half an hour ago, um, nothing converted, right? When I select this checkbox and then hit done, now all of the files or all of the folders that are able to convert will convert. So to prove it to you, and here's something that I found folks, sometimes, and this is actually in the handout, sometimes you, after you um, make that conversion on or off, on or off, you need to hit refresh on your screen. So hit refresh and you might have to count to 10. So really fast. What that does is that just tells Chrome browser, hey, I've made a change. And because we're on slow Wi-Fi right now, you shouldn't have to hit that refresh button. Okay, you shouldn't have to do that. But um, you, uh, sorry, my, my brain went off, off the side there. You might not, you shouldn't have to do that, but it does give Google a chance to, <gasps> new setting on slow Wi-Fi. Okay, so just hit your refresh button until you get back to work. And then after that, you won't have to. Uh, so right here, I'm going to, now I'm gonna open this to prove it to you. They're all Microsoft Word documents. Okay, I'm gonna click, hold and drag this folder right into here. I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna wait for the files to upload. All I did was drag them, right? Here's the folder. But I know because Melinda's told me that I need to wait for that little green check mark right there. 
and it it's telling me it's starting to upload so it's thinking about it so i might have to go get a cup of coffee or hey there it is it's done the little green checkbox is done there so i'm going to open up my folder and look at that they are all converted and look see dot ds underscore store i'm going to click that and delete it because i don't need it and it's 6k worth of space gone okay so you can convert an entire folder now here's the problem most people have they didn't know about that they didn't know about that and now they have a folder full of microsoft files just like this one and they want to convert all of these and let's say there's like 50 of them oh my god i don't want to have to open every one and then convert it so what you need to do is download it okay so what you i'm going to do and show you how this done this is also in the handout so here here it is here's office files okay when i click on a uh a folder it gives me options up at the top it also gives me options if i right click so i can do it either way i can use the skinny snowman up at the top and i can select download now or i like to right click because it's faster for me so i right click on a folder and then i hit download here's what you now down at the bottom in my upload download box is telling me it's zipping a file what that means is it's taking all the files and it's compressing it into a smaller little package okay it's compressing it into a small package as soon as it does that you're going to get this message that says leave and a lot of people are going oh, i don't want to leave i want it to zip i want to download but it's okay relax okay look down at your download box and it says zipping one file it's okay you're going to hit as soon as that leave button comes up you're going to hit it click leave and then you can see that i got the little green check box and then my desktop kicks in it says okay here you go we got a zip file where do you want to do with it so i want to put it on my desktop I'm actually going to rename it Office Files 2. Okay. I'm having it go to my desktop. I'm hitting save. And here is the zip file. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you. Here's the zip. So it says Office Files with the number two zip. Okay. When you get a zip file on most devices uh, don't do this on a tablet don't do this on a phone do this on a desktop or a laptop okay what you're going to do when you get a zip file is you're just going to double click it double click it's going to open it's going to unpackage itself see it expanded there we go now i have a folder that i can upload into drive and convert Okay, now I can drag this folder. It's full of Microsoft files. This is the one I downloaded from Drive that I went, <gasps> oh, I forgot to have convert on, right? So now I can drag this into Drive and it will convert because now I have that convert button on. So if you have a, a folder with a bunch of files in it that you want to convert, that's what you have to do. You have to download it, it'll zip. Okay, you have to unzip the zip okay so you have to uncompress it basically then you when once it's unzipped you drag that folder back into drive now here's the thing folks if you drag it back into drive and you don't have this checkbox checked you are in a vicious loop so just make sure that your conversion button's on before you start um before you start uploading files um, while we're here, there's a view items taking up storage link, which if you look at that, you can see all of the files uh, in order storage used. There's also a link on the handout, which I thought was a lot easier. So I'm going to go back to the handout real quick, find out which slide it's on. <laughs> it's in the convert area. So we just went through a bunch of conversions. So why convert? Because it saves space. And there's a link on this, um, this slide, number 26, that will go to, it's called one.google.com. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to buy more storage if you need it. And it's actually pretty reasonable. Uh, I think it's $1.99 a month. 
okay? But right here, I can tell that I'm only using, I'm not even using a gig yet of space. I've got 15 gigs of three storage. Um, and right here, I've got my, uh, my drive. If I wanted to, I could select this little uh, open new window button here, and it will take me to my drive and give me that list that I just showed you. Uh, you could also go to your Gmail and you can find all the, the attachments. If you have any photos, you could go to photos and you could figure out, okay, which ones do you need, which ones don't you need. Um, they also give you some tips on how you can save space on that page. So go to that page uh, and figure out if you've got a bunch of storage that um, you don't really need. But often I don't want a Word doc to automatically convert to Google Docs because the formatting gets messed up. Corey, you don't have to convert. Okay, what you turn on, you can turn off because you control this little gearbox right here that I'm showing you on the slide set. You control that. That's on you. So you decide, okay, do I want to convert this before I upload it? If the answer is yes, then you make sure it's on. And same question, do I want to upload this or do I want to convert this before I upload it? And if the answer is no, then you go to the settings gear and you make sure it's turned off. Okay, is storage the only advantage to converting? I don't think so. I think there are a lot of more advantages, Shirley, especially with our students. Um, when I'm using docs with people, uh, I know that it's free. And I know that they won't be asked to pay for anything. I know that they won't be told that uh, they've run out of space generally when I'm, when I'm giving assignments and stuff. So I don't have to worry about students having to buy more space on the Microsoft Cloud, okay? Not to mention having it installed or a subscription to Microsoft or, or the Apple product. I mean, there's a lot of clouds out there. So, and Google is really easy to use. The interface, the layout, everything's very, um, in my opinion, user-friendly. You don't have to search for 5, 10, 15 hours to find that <laughs> the slides master. <laughs> you know, this is my personal opinion. It's easy to use, it's easy to teach, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. So if you've convert, if everything that you create is a Google Doc or a Google Slides presentation or a Google Sheet, there's no space. There's no space. So that in and of itself, that makes it free for folks. Is it possible to convert back to the original format? Absolutely, Gloria. So let's do that. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to that office uh, folder. So let's say I converted uh, the resume demo. Okay, I'm going to open that. Um, I just double clicked on it. And this is the one that I, that I converted, okay, uh, last night. So I'm going to just... This is a resume, yeah. Melinda, oops, spell your name correctly on a resume. It's one of the first things you look at. Okay, <laughs> so here's a resume, I made a change. Now, what if I wanna download this? Um, because again, somebody doesn't want to use Google Docs or they don't have a Google Docs um, pass, password or account or whatever, that I know they have Microsoft, right? So I go to the file menu. Go to the file menu and I download. Within Google Docs, you have a lot of options here. These are all listed on the handout. You have the option of Microsoft Word and ODT. Um, ODT is just open document format if you're on a Linux machine. Uh, rich text format. That means all of the images are stripped out. Okay, but you're ha you've got your bold, your italic, um, your special font. Okay, PDF is PDF, we all know PDF is portable document format. So all of your pictures should kind of stay in the same place. Um, plain text, that means everything's stripped out. Your bolding, your italic, everything's stripped out. All you're left with is text. Sometimes you want that. Uh, web page, HTML, don't do this. Um, you don't need it. it. It creates a zip file of everything and just don't do it, okay? <laughs> just don't do it. Unless you know what cascading style sheets means, if you have to ask, don't do it, okay? EPUB, so the EPUB is, it, it will create a book, which I found was really cool. I'm on a Mac and when I created an ebook, it actually took the, the thing, the document that I, that I had and it made a book out of it. 
um, which was really kind of neat. So you might want to consider that when, you, um, when you're creating a document to make a book that way. Uh, can you edit an EPUB? No. It's like a, a, a PDF. So no can do. Um, on this downloads, what was it? There's something else. Oh, the, the, the PDF. Um, sometimes the objects, the pictures, they, they get skewed a little bit. And I went ahead and hit the PDF because I wanted to see what happened. I'm going to put this on my desktop. Um, so sometimes, you know, this square is kind of towards the edge. So because of that, it might get <coughs> scooted over a little bit. All right. So if that happens, what I can do as the owner of this doc is I can make pictures smaller. I can arrange them in such a way. Um, so you might have to finesse it a little bit. That's what I guess I'm saying. You might have, if you want to convert something to PDF, you might have to finesse it a bit. Since you converted the same folder twice, doesn't G Drive tell you that these files already exist? No, why would it do that? It thinks you know what you're doing. So it's not gonna give you any hints. Now, what you could do if you wanted to know if you had a bunch of duplicates um, is you would click on, what I did was I went to Drive and then down at the very bottom left-hand side, I see the word storage. So I click that, okay? Now, right now it's telling me the storage used, right? I'm just showing it so I can go up and down. Um, and then I have to look down this long list to see if I have any duplicate files, okay? Or if you think you might have a duplicate, you could um, use the search tools to, I don't know, find it. <laughs> you know, there's lots of different ways to find the files that you have on your desktop. Uh, but Google doesn't care if you have 30 untitled documents. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Google does not care if you have 30 untitled documents. I know this from experience because when Google Docs first came out, they didn't have Drive. They had a, a Docs area. Uh, and I went in and I created all these Google documents. I thought it was really cool. And I, I showed my, um, my director, hey, look at this. And I can do this, this, and this. Oh, that's really cool. And then a week later, hey, remember that thing you showed me? I, could you print it out? I went, absolutely. So I went back to my Google Docs area and I went, Oh, no, <laughs> because I had 30 untitled documents. They were all different. <laughs> and thank God Google had a search at that time so I could go in and search for a keyword that was on the document that she wanted to see. So please title all your documents. And if you have duplicates, you'll find them eventually or you can search for them. I think that answers your question. So what you do is you open Drive, you right click the Word file and you open with. Then you choose Google Docs, okay? It maintains the setting, right? And then you will want to go to the file menu and save as. So when you open up a Word document, when you open up something that has .docx at the end of it, and this one doesn't, this one doesn't that I have open up right now. So I'm gonna hit the file menu and I do not see save as Google, right? So I'm gonna go back to my Google Drive. I'm gonna open up that folder and here we go. Okay, here's a Word file. I'm going to right click, open with Google Docs, right? Wait for the magic. I can make edits now if I want. All right, there's a nice little picture. I can make this picture smaller. This actually came from Microsoft. It took the picture and everything. I can create a title. All right, and now it's saved, but it's still a Microsoft Doc. What if I want to convert this to a Google Doc? I can do that. So I'm going to go to File. Now I see Save as Google Docs. Save as Google Docs. You can do this with slides and sheets as well. So we're going to save as Google Docs. I have to wait for the magic. It's opening up in a new tab. Here's the document. Wait for the magic. It's got to get the picture. It's got to remember who it was, where it was, how it was, when it was. There we go. Everything's there now. All right, as I scroll down, I see all the stuff. Okay. 
but I don't see .docx. So I have now, I have two identical, if you can see this, here we go, I have two identical documents. One is a document that is from Microsoft, right? And one is a Google Doc. Does Google care that they're named the same thing? Does Google care that I have both types of files? No. Here we go. Here is the, the one that I opened up, paper. It's got .docx at the end of it. And here's the one where I, oops, here's the one I converted. It's like, wait, where'd it go? How do you, I convert a PDF to a Google or a Word doc? Oh my goodness, I'm glad you said that. You know what, that's not in the handout, but it's going to be now. That's a good question. Hang on just a sec, I'm gonna find a PDF. Here's a copy of Applied Digital Main One Sheet. I have no idea what it is, but I'm going to right click it and I'm going to open with Google Docs. Then I'm gonna let it do its magic. I'm waiting. If there's a lot to it, it's gonna take longer. And look folks, I just opened a PDF in Google Docs and I can edit it. Now, does it look like the PDF? Probably not. Um, it looks like it's mixing, messing up some, oh, this was a um, slides deck, that's why. That's why, so the format's a little off. So, it, and it's still, still cranking. So, um, what I would do right here, now remember this was last week. I showed you that you could go to File, Page Setup. And I'm gonna make the orientation on the whole document landscape so that it becomes wide instead of long. And I'm gonna say, okay. And that, there we go, is a better aspect ratio for this PDF because the PDF that I converted uh, was actually a slides deck. So it started out as a, this right here, started out as a slides deck and then I converted it to a PDF. Now I've just taken that PDF and I've converted it to a Google Doc. Uh, if I make the slide a PDF, will your embedded hot link still work? Absolutely. I'm looking for something that's had um, some uh, work done to it. This is a document that I've actually linked to in the handout called Voice Typing Commands. So, and we might get to voice typing probably next week. Um, so I'm gonna go to File. Here we go, this is what I'm looking for, Version History. So I'm gonna see the version history. So if you're worried about your document, if you're worried about people making changes to it and you don't and you want them to be able to edit but you also want to maybe to see what they've done there's lots of ways to do it this is the best way you go to file version history and on the far right hand side way down at the bottom there's a little checkbox that says show changes now if you deselect that you just sort of see the document okay but when I select that checkbox, you're gonna see all of the changes. They're kind of highlighted depending on the person, okay? If we had five people on this document and they all made changes, you would see some of the changes being made in red, some being made in orange, green, blue, purple. There's five colors. So for every person, they're all gonna get their own color. Now this one, has, is I own it and I'm the only one editing it. So I can see that all of these are green because SCOE Tech, that's me, has made all these changes. So everything that you see here that's been edited is actually green, okay? If someone else was in here, they, their color might be purple and all the changes they made would be purple. If I want to see each individual change, I would select this arrow next to the date and then I can go to November 28th at 9.52 p.m. There are the changes that were made at that time, okay? If I wanna go to even back further, if I wanna go to 9.45 p.m. on Jan or November 28th, boom, those are the changes at that time. If I wanna go back to the beginning of the document, here it is, okay? It was just before I pasted that. 
So I can go all the way back to the end of time or to the beginning of time on this document. And if this is what I want to restore this version to, be careful because that's what will happen. And then you lose all of this other information. So Google came up with a really good idea. They came up with the make copy option. So let's say I'm, I'm, I'm on this version and I really like this. Um, I don't want to mess up the latest greatest, but I want some of the information that is on this June 8th area. There's a skinny snowman now next to the date and time stamp of the changes that were made on this document. Okay, date and time, skinny snowman, more action. So I can name this version. So I can call this keeper or I could call this um, it copied. I can name it anything I want, All right? The date and time stamp are still there, but now I've kind of given myself a word to associate with what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna hit the skinny snowman and I'm going to make a copy. And what it does is it makes a copy of the document in that point in time. If you hit the word restore and you change your mind, <laughs> thanks for playing, but no, you do not pass go, you do not collect $200 and you do not get your document back. <laughs> so, so don't do that. <laughs> All right. Look for this skinny snowman off to the side instead. Okay. Another thing you could do is, um, you know, you're looking at this and going, yeah, uh, uh, man. for whatever reason, you want to make a copy of it um, as a static version for that point in time. Again, you can go back to version history and hit the skinny snowman, make a copy wherever, or you could just go to file, make a copy. Okay. And then you'll get the latest, greatest stamped this time. And then you can go back to the original and then do whatever you want with it. Okay, so at least you have that pristine version, the latest, greatest, as a copy off to the side somewhere, just, just in case you do change your mind, okay? So again, the first few times you do something in Google that you're not quite sure about, I don't know if I need to make a copy or not, always err on the side of caution. Go ahead and make a copy. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, let me go back to the handout, because I really, I, I wanted to spend a lot of time on the, the conversion, because I knew that was going to take a while. I want people to be comfortable with it. Uh, PDF versions. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have to make that yet. So can you convert JPEGs or scanned documents? Absolutely. You betcha. So Google recognizes text, folks. Um, and Google has also, tell you what, I'm going to create a new doc. I'm going to, oops, docs.new. Wow. Sorry, my fingers are <laughs> not working for me. There we go. Docs.new. So Google has it's done a couple things. Number one, if you take a picture of some text and you put it in your Google Drive, you can insert that. You can go to insert image and you look for it on your drive. Okay. If you're using Google Photos, you could also go to Google Photos and add that as well. Okay. Google also has a pretty cool tool called Keep, K-E-E-P dot Google dot com. So let me show you that real quick. So you see what I'm talking about. Okay. So what I did or what I've done um, is I took a picture of a, a postcard that was sent to me. Okay. I have a dentist appointment coming up. Okay, so I'm going to be out of the office on June 30th, just letting you know ahead of time. <laughs> All right, here's my dentist information. Now, when you take a picture you with Keep, you have to use your phone or your tablet because it has to have a camera on it, right? So you use your phone or your, cam uh, your, phone or your tablet. Uh, you can also use a Chromebook as well, I think. No, let me backtrack on that. Nope, you have to use a phone or a tablet. All right, so you go to keep.google.com or your app, all right, and then you take a picture, which is what I did here, all right? Then there's some really cool magic. Now, I've taken a picture of something that has text on it, right? So on the keep note, 
there is a little three dots here. Okay, the more button, the skinny snowman, if you will. I'm going to click that. And one of those selections right there is called grab image text. So I'm going to click that. Now, it doesn't look like it did too much, except when I scroll down now, and I am able to scroll down now, I see all of that text that is on my keep note. I'm going to close that. Google has also, and here, here's all that text right there. Google has, um, I'm going to say in the past year, year and a half, uh, allowed Keep to be integrated into Google Docs. So I'm going to hit this on the far right hand side. <clears throat> if you don't see, yeah, you know, if you don't see the side panel, there's an arrow way down at the bottom of your screen. Um, and when you hover over it, it says show side panel. So I'm going to click that and then I see the calendar. It looks like a little uh, light bulb, a little yellow light bulb, light bulb that's keep and then tasks. I'm going to hit the keep icon. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up all of my keep notes, right? I'm going to click, hold, and drag. No, I'm not because I just remembered they disabled that. So you used to be able to click, hold, and drag it over into your dock. Now they want you to hit this little skinny snowman, which is almost barely visible on some of the, the images that you take. But all you have to do is just scroll your mouse over to the right until you see, ah, there's the hand. Okay, when it becomes a hand, click on it. And then we can add this to the document. Okay, so I've added it to the document. Now I'm getting not only the image, which I can delete, but I got the text too. So that's another way to get text into a document from an image. The first way I've already shown you is you right click and you open with Google Docs. Remember we opened up a PDF, right? So you right click and open with Google Docs. Google Doc will grind it up a little bit, and then it will open up. And you should have all of the text and the images should be there as well. Going back to share, and sharing a document with students that I want them to work on and resubmit, I should be giving them editor permissions? Absolutely not. <laughs> Barbara, <laughs> okay, when you're sharing with students, you have to be careful, all right? Number one, um, and yes, you could uh, share with them and have them have editor rights. If I was going to do that, and I, we do have some teachers that do this, what they will do is they insert a table, okay? And let's see, there's a table, all right? And we're going to put the, the student ID. Okay, and then we're going to, uh, maybe I got too many columns here, uh, or write a sentence. Okay, write a sentence. Okay, and I do, I have too many columns here. So let's, this is just quick and dirty here. I'm going to merge cells, boom. Okay, quick and dirty. So student ID, write a sentence, right? So when student one comes in, they know that they have to go on the, student one row, student two, student three, student four. All right, so you assign your students a cell on a table, okay? Or you type their names in for them, uh, BRP, okay, and we got CC, okay? You guys are both in the Q&A, so, <laughs> right? So they would know by, by some hook or crook that you set up ahead of time, they know where they're supposed to type. I would suggest assigning all of your students a number, okay? It sounds weird. Just some sort of a student ID so that they know when they go to the document that you're gonna share with them, they always go to cell number 10 because that's their number, right? Or if you sell, uh, share a, um, not sell, but share a uh, slides deck with them, they always go to slide number 10 if you want them to edit or whatever they're opening up. They always know their number, so that's where they go, okay? The other way to have them um, write on a document and then submit it to you is to give them view rights, and then you have to walk them through, file, make a copy, all right? That way they get their own copy of I'm going to name this writing assignment, okay? 
So here's my original document. I would go to share. I would get shareable link. Okay, so anyone with the link can, hang on a minute. There we go. So on the link, we want to make it anyone with the link can view. So I went to share, I went to get link, and then instead of restricted, I selected anyone with the link, and then off to the side, anyone with the link can view, can comment, or can edit. I only want them to view, okay? Then I hit done, or I copy the link again just because I want to be super cautious. I want to make sure I got the link. I hit done. Now I can send my students that link. They will only be able to view this link, okay? then I would have, I'd have to walk them through somehow or show them, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to file, make a copy, okay? Where you see the words copy of, I want you to put your last name, right? And then I want you to say, okay. When they do that, they get their own document that they can write on, and then you have to show them how to share it back to you. There's a much easier way of doing this. It's called Google Classroom. Because when they open, when they go to Google Classroom, they click on the assignment, they do the assignment, and they turn it into you. And they're not writing on each other's documents because you're making each of them their own copy. You can do that through Google Classroom. Uh, we do have a Google Classroom video on the OTAN site. I'd recommend you watch that. And um, check it out. You could also do the same thing through uh, with other LMS platforms like Moodle or through Canvas or Schoology. So there's lots of different ways to share with your student besides having them all write on the same document. I do not recommend that at all. Is there a way you can do that with a screenshot? What did you get the text out of the postcard? Okay, screenshot. Here we go. So let's say we go to uh, VOA English. Okay, this is enough. All right, right here. I'm going to use an extension. Okay, I'm going to um, go to a screenshot. And I'm not going to make any comments to that <laughs> on the Q&A. Uh, and I'm going to capture a selected area. This is awesome screenshot. And I'm going to say, let's just pretend that this is the text I want. Okay, I'm going to capture it. Now, because I am using a Chrome extension. I'm going to hit done. After you do that, what? Google Drive. Connect with Google Drive. I already did this. Why is it asking me again? See, it happens to me too. Uh, here's, here's what I was waiting for. Grant awesome screenshot permission. <gasps> View and manage and configuration data on your Google Drive? Yes, it's okay. See, it's all right. It just wants to know, it just wants you to know that, hey, I need to be able to put this in your drive. And in order to do that, you need to give me read write permissions. That's all it's saying. It's okay. You can deselect some of the stuff if you want. I don't, I don't do that. I just let it go. Um, we're going to name this something to delete. After you set all this up, you don't have to do it again. Um, We'll put it in awesome screenshot and upload. Saving to Google Drive, yay! All right, so you go through all of that the first time, okay? After you do that, it always knows where to go and you don't have to do that again. So I'm gonna go back to my drive. I should now have a folder called awesome screenshot somewhere, there it is, okay? And there it is the file, yeah? Something to delete. I'm going to right click, I'm going to open with, Google Docs. I'm going to wait for the magic. Sometimes the magic takes a little longer because the rabbit doesn't want to come out of the hat. And here is the text. Da, 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 da. And here's the picture of the text. So I can compare the two because what it's actually doing is it's doing an OCR, optical character recognition, uh, which is a scanner. Google is a scanner. Isn't that cool? So you can use a keep to do it, or you can just make sure that the image is in your drive somehow. 
You can take a photo and upload it into your drive. Remember, you can drag from your desktop into your drive. Boom, there's your picture. And then right click it and open with. Here's the text. I can do anything I want with this text now. Um, I can change the font. I can make it bigger, right? Bada bing, bada boom. And do I need to keep this picture? No, I can delete it. So all I have left is the text. So yeah, you can take screenshots of a website. Now here's the thing, folks. We're talking about copyright, okay? So because you're using the materials in a teaching setting, because you're covered under law statute for the most part, but be careful, okay? Make sure, um, you know, maybe change a word or two here and there, all right? Uh, just be aware of copyright issues. That's all I'm, all I'm, and copyright permissions. Most sites now don't care if you're in a, um, especially now, they want teachers to use their materials. They want teachers to use their, quote unquote text, okay? Just give them credit for it. Can you show us how to do the screenshot? There's lots of ways to do a screenshot. If you're using Chrome, there are a bunch of extensions that you can use to do screenshots, okay? Uh, they're also on different operating systems. You can use, they'll have a screenshot creator. Now on a Mac, I know the Mac, and I'm gonna put uh, Marjorie on the spot. So Marjorie, you're gonna have to unmute here in a sec. But on a Mac, we, I use screenshot, okay? And when I click on this little icon here, I can grab any part of the desktop I want, okay? And I can capture that. What it will do is it downloads to my desktop and then I do whatever I want with it. Marjorie, what are the, um, the commands for a PC? Print screen, yeah, print screen does the entire thing. I'm I'm looking for the just the 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 grab where you, they can grab a specific part. And while you're looking for that, uh, Miss Trish, do you eventually have to pay for the extensions? Um, it depends on the extension. This awesome screenshot uh, record is the bomb. So I'm gonna go. I open up the extension. Okay, and on here, it says capture visible part of part visible part of the page. Uh, capture selected area capture entire page. This is the magic right here. So I'm going to click that, let it do its thing. And right now, folks, I have the entire page that I just had open. Not only that, but I have the ability to annotate on the page. And then I hit done. There's the picture. Now I can from here, what I usually do, and I know I saw, I showed you how to save it to your cloud. I usually just download it to my computer. I usually just download it. It goes to my computer. Yeah, yeah. Always answer to the positive so you can use it. There it is. I'm going to hit save. Boom. Now it's on my computer. It's bouncing up and down down here because it says, hey, I'm here, I'm here. Um, and then I can do what I want with it. Okay, so awesome screenshot recorder is a really cool tool. Another one is, um, and Elisa uh, Takeuchi has used this. Oops, come on, he's trying to open a uh, screencastify. So you can take pictures with that as well. If you go to the Chrome extension store, they'll give you a whole list of them. I would recommend awesome screenshot recorder, and Elisa would recommend um, screencastify. So for the videos, now we each, we each have our own. But uh, to date, Ms. Trish, I have not been asked to pay for Awesome Screenshot Recorder. <laughs> so, hey. All righty. So, Marjorie. Everything I found um, also mentions, um, what was it? Uh, screen Snip that some people have mentioned in chat. Um, I'm also tool. seeing the print screen, and then I think it said Alt Print Screen if you just want to do the, um, just the just selected window. Um, another tool that a couple of other people in the OTAN office use is um, called Snagit. It's uh, got a free, there's a free, I'm not sure if it's a trial or if it's free, but I know there's a paid version that they use. So, um, right. yeah. So Snagit, there we go. Um, at the 
bottom or at the very end of the handout, there will be a new PDF link, June uh, 16th, 2020 PDF. So that will be a link by tomorrow afternoon. 